Hey, what's going on, my friends? Dan Taylor from DanThePixarFan.com here, back once again, finally, for another Mattel Lightyear 5-inch scale collection review, and this time I'm taking a detailed look at the Blast and Battle XL15 ship, which, yes, came out clear back in April. You know I got it then if you saw my original Lightyear haul video, but somehow my review for it just kept getting pushed back time and time again since I was trying to review all the initial Lightyear toy launch items and at the same time keep up with the other new releases that kept coming out at rapid speed. I mean, I still haven't even started my Lightyear your hyperspeed series or large scale reviews so yeah needless to say I know I'm behind but hopefully this review was worth the wait and you know what honestly there are some perks of reviewing this late since now I can share what it looks like with the 5 inch scale XL15 buzz figure which wasn't available when this first came out similarly I can compare this ship to the XL1 ship which again I wouldn't have been able to do before so yeah I'll be doing both those things here today and of course I'm gonna test out just how well all the features work so stick around all right, so the XL15 ship here was the first vehicle released in this Lightyear 5-inch scale action figure collection. I know many vehicles have come out since then, but yeah, this was numero uno, which makes sense since this is Buzz's most featured ship in the film with the most screen time, I believe. But really, that's enough intro. Let's just dive right into things here, right? You've waited long enough. I'm not going to say much about the packaging. It's really good, like usual, sweet window box, solid presentation. Here's a quick look at the back of the box, which highlights some of the ship's action features, as always. It also shows the original first wave of six single pack figures in this line, all of which I've reviewed here on my channel. And then some additional features like the launching projectiles and fold out landing gear are shown here on the side. And with all that said, it's time to tear into this sucker, so hang tight, I'll be right back with the ship in hand, finally, after all these months. Okay, so here it is, unassembled of course. This is how the vehicle comes straight out of the package. It falls right on out off of the cardboard backing after removing those little plastic doodads that you saw me twisting off. And now before I put this toy together, I'm gonna take a quick look at all the contents included in the box. So you have the main part of the ship here. It's got an opening cockpit and a real cool blast out feature, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. Then you have the right wing here, which just needs to snap into place. It's a one-time assembly. In this bag, we got the two tail fins, which snap into the top of the ship. This little piece snaps into the left wing to complete the wing. It was just left off so that the ship could fit into the box. Here's one of the thrusters that will end up snapping onto the back. Here are the instructions. And lastly, here's the other thruster. That's it for the bag. Then there's also four blue missiles included. And Buzz's helmet, which is the same as every Alpha Suit Buzz helmet released in this line. Nothing new to report on here. And next up is Buzz's Phase 1 Jetpack with Wings. Finally, guys, it's about time I got this opened up so I can test out how it works with the other Buzzes in this line. As I've talked about many times, this is the jetpack that's compatible with every 5-inch scale XL suit Buzz that's been released in the line so far. I'm not going to show all of them here since you get the point, but I did want to show some examples. Now, this jetpack is different from the one that comes with the deluxe mission-equipped Buzz. Here's a comparison. We got the mission-equipped one on the top and this XL15 one on the bottom. But yeah, while I still feel the deluxe one is maybe a bit too small the one included with this xl15 chip here might scale a little too big so i don't know the perfect jetpack size is probably somewhere in between and then we got the buzz figure itself nothing new here in terms of body or head sculpt it's the same as the others in this line so far nothing new with the facial expression or anything the main thing of note here is the paint application or lack thereof while the other alpha suit buzzes released in this line also had pretty minimal paint details this one has even less for some reason probably just to cut costs since it is a pack and figure as you can see the buttons on his chest aren't even painted i mean my two-year-old son even noticed and commented on that also no green paint down on his ankles the only thing that this figure gets better compared to the other alpha suit buzzes is this area where the helmet attaches to it's a dark gray color here on this one instead of white which is actually more accurate to the film so that's kind of cool and well i've reviewed essentially the same figure a dozen times so far here on my channel so i'm not going to spend any more time on it here but if you're interested in more of my thoughts including a more comprehensive look at all 12 points of articulation be sure to check out my other reviews by hitting the card above which will take you to my massive and ever-expanding playlist of mattel lightyear five inch scale figure reviews now this I gotta show though, here's how the jetpack fits into the port on the back of Buzz. Snaps right in with ease, you'll feel a little click so that you know it's secure, and yeah, it looks pretty cool, again a little oversized in my opinion, but not bad. I know what you're all waiting for though, you guys want to see Buzz in the upgraded suit slash jetpack scene at the end of Lightyear that looks more like the Toy Story Buzz suit that we all know and love. And don't worry guys, I have great news, that one is coming after all so stay tuned, more reveals coming soon. 
Okay, now let's pop on Buzz's helmet. It fits on the same as always. Here he is with his completed look. And that is everything that comes in the box, guys. So let's go ahead and get everything assembled. And by the way, here's a look at the instructions. I'm not going to go through them in full. I just wanted to share the pages quickly here so that you can pause and read them if you're interested. Or maybe you're watching this down the road and you lost yours. Um, you need to see them again for reference. Whatever it might be, I just thought that it might be helpful to someone if I shared them briefly here. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and do the assembly together. This piece just snaps onto the wing like this. It does take a bit of force. There, okay, that's all good. This wing snaps into place right here, and again, it does take some force, which is probably why they say adult assembly required on the box. There we go. Now, this thruster piece, or whatever you might call it, gets snapped into this side on the back like so. Okie dokie, this piece goes on this side like this. Not difficult at all. You'll feel it when it's secure. And lastly, the two tail fins go on just like this. And yeah, it seems like kind of a lot of pieces when I'm talking through things here, but really in real time, this takes like a minute or less to put together. Not a tedious process at all. No stickers to put on or anything like that, which honestly, even though I'm not a big fan of applying decals, I do think this could have benefited from at least some to add in some missing color, like the red and white stripes that should have been on the wings and some other details as well. But as you can see, even as is, this is overall a really cool vehicle. Very well done by Mattel. So before I start taking a look at all the features, here's just a quick turnaround so you can see the ship in full. Lots of nice molded details. Of course, minimal paint ops as usual though. No weathering or anything like that. So for you customizers out there, I'm sure a lot of you have or will add a nice black wash over this to give it that added grit, which provides a little bit more realism. And just like it was with the XL1 ship, the XL15 here also has fold-out landing gear, but again, the wheels are just molded on. They don't actually roll, which might disappoint some, but it's really no biggie to me. Now, these buttons here on the wings are what you'll press to fire the missiles. I'll show off that feature in just a few moments. And that is it for the full ship mold itself. Now let's dive into the action. To open the full cockpit, what you do is pull this handle on the back here, and look at that, everything pops open. Awesome. And here's just a closer look at all the molded details inside the cockpit. And then to close everything back up, push the handle back in, and it almost all closes back up on its own. You just have to push down the canopy manually. And just a heads up, if it's not clicking and staying down, it just means that you're not pressing down hard enough. It's a little hard to see here, but there's a little tab on the canopy there that secures things. You just have to give it a little added force as you push down to get it under the lip, and there we go. By the way, if you want to open just the canopy without everything else popping open, you can use this little button here on top just like that. And now to load the missiles, one missile per side, like this, and then the remaining two extra missiles get stored on the back here. They click in on either side like this, so you have quick access for a reload during play. That's a pretty cool feature for sure. And it's nice that the extra ones back there are secure. They're not gonna slide out during action. And okay, let's do this. Ready, aim, fire, boom! And on this side, boom! Awesome. And now for the big ejecting feature that you've been waiting for. Got Buzz already here. And man, let me tell you that this is not as difficult to use as I've seen other people say. Just pull to open, plug Buzz into the peg holes like this, push down hard to make sure he's nice and secure. There we go, fantastic. Now clip this clamp piece around Buzz's waist like so. Make sure it's in the proper place, which is actually like right below his belt. Then pull back his wings like this, make sure they're lined up with the space behind them, and push the handle back into close. You do have to give everything a nice push down as well just to tighten it all up. Close the canopy like this, give it a solid push down as well till you feel a little click. Now all you have to do is pull the handle out with a bit of force and bam, everything opens up, Buzz launches up and his wings pop out just like the thrilling moment in the film during Buzz's final battle with Zerg. And yeah, in my experience here, the feature is a quick setup, not a pain at all in my opinion and everything works like a charm you might need to practice it might take a couple times to get right sometimes the wings don't extend out if you don't pull the handle hard enough for example but you should get the hang of it real quick see I'll go ahead and do it one more time without any cuts so you can see how fast and simple it is to use this feature okay things are good to go everything is pushed down and tight not today Zerg and one more time at a different angle Whoosh. pretty freaking cool if you ask me now, just to wrap things up, here's a comparison of the buzz that comes with the XL15 here, there in the middle, next to the deluxe mission-equipped buzz on the left, and the buzz that comes with the hostile planet pack there on the right, which is more of your basic buzz without any gimmick. Let me know your fave 5-inch alpha buzz released so far in this line down below.
And just a reminder, the mission equipped jetpack doesn't work with the buzz from this XL15 set or any of the XL suit buzzes for that matter. But again, the jetpack included here with the XL15 can go on any of the Alpha slash XL suit buzzes. As you can see, it's compatible with the port there. So let's go ahead and stick this on the XL15 buzz just for fun here. I know it looks a little goofy, obviously, but there you go. Now you can try out the ejecting feature with other buzzes wearing the jetpack, like the XL15 buzz here, but in my personal experience so far, no matter how many times I try, it just doesn't work as good with this one or any of the XL buzzes. Um, maybe you'll feel different, but yeah, not quite as fun if you ask me. However, if you just want to load XL15 buzz in the ship to pilot it without the jetpack, that's totally fine and awesome. I encourage that to recreate movie moments. It works great. Check it out, guys. Lastly, here's just a quick shot of the XL1 ship on the left next to this XL15 ship on the right, just so you can see what they look like next to each other. Very comparable in size, as you can see, and man, do they both look awesome. Well, that is it, everyone. That is finally my detailed, in-depth look at the Blast and Battle XL15 ship from earlier this year. It's got my seal of approval as an adult collector and dad. It's also got my almost three-year-old son's approval as well. He absolutely loves this and all the Lightyear toys. He does ask to play with them every day, and he's able to play with this one all by himself. He knows how to put Buzz in. He understands how to pull the handle hard to make Buzz and his wings pop out. So yeah, it's kid-tested and approved on my end as well, and I hope you enjoy it as much as us. My I absolutely recommend picking this up for your collection and target is your best bet right now in store or online retail price is $48.99 a little pricey but you know that's kind of how it is these days anyway thanks so much for watching everyone i will catch you in my next video until then dan taylor here signing off